All right. Welcome to another episode, or actually the first episode of Talent Skill Tree. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is my very first episode, and I'm very excited. My first guest actually is a longtime friend, Tyler Tellez. Am I saying your last name correctly? Yep, that's how you say it. Tyler Tellez. I, you know what I mean? I, I've, I've always called you by your first name. I uh, yep. never really got into your last name, but uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. So I'm so excited, too. Well, I've been talking to Tyler about a few things in the gaming industry world. And in this market, I've always told people we're in an employer's market, right? It's a tough market right now because of all the massive layoffs, the cutbacks, the rifts. And not only are you trying to f break into the gaming industry, but also interviewing with companies, but you're also interviewing against the big boys, the fangs, uh, the Facebook, Amazon, Google, Netflix. So you have an added layer on top of a tough market in general, which is the video gaming industry market in general. And then you have this added layer of competition that we haven't seen as big as it is now in this year, you know? And so I wanted to bring Tyler on board because I wanted to get a fresh perspective. We have been chatting, we've been good friends and he's been wanting to break into the gaming industry. And we've been kind of going back and forth as far as spitballing some different ideas and tips and really wanted to talk to you, share with the audience here, you know, what are the challenges that you're experiencing? What are the steps that you're currently going through and just kind of picking your brains if that's okay. Of course, of course. So uh, I guess I'll, I'll go. Yeah. So. For me, so a little bit about, about me, I currently work in IT, so I do work in the tech field. At least it's in the right direction. Definitely not in the same industry, though, so nowhere near it. It makes it a little hard kind of breaking into it when you already also work a full job. Uh, right, because you don't have kinda, prior video gaming experience. Exactly, exactly. So I can go in and say I know a couple of these things, but so many jobs want some experience, even if it's a year or two of something. So it is hard to... but. Even so, I kind of have to make sure that I'm confident enough that I can get a lot of these positions that require some skills that I myself don't fully have yet or that I've been working towards getting. And a big part of that uh, challenge, too, is just like motivation after work. Uh, that's one of the hardest things is you finish a hard day of work, you've been learning in, in the office or you've been working on some big project and then you got to get back and you got to learn. Now that's that's like one of the biggest, toughest parts of this, obviously. It's almost like working two jobs at times, right? Because you're preparing to break in. So, I mean, in my case, I'm in an industry looking to break into a new one, whereas I'm sure other people will have no yeah. jobs and have all the time in the world. So I'm a little bit different than some of those people. Right, right. Well, that's let's talk about my that. biggest challenge, right? Well, let's dig into that. You, I think you hit it right on the head as far as what a lot of people are experiencing right now and growing pains mm -hmm. is motivation, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so... You mentioned motivation is hard for you because you have a full-time job as most people out there either have a full-time job or they're currently laid off looking for work. Yeah. And so how do you stay motivated? Because in your case, you have a full-time job and I'm sure you have a life on your own yeah. after work right. and then also video gaming, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's a big part of it. So how do you stay motivated? How do you continue the process of your journey, so to speak, in, in finding uh, the next opportunity in the gaming industry? Yeah, well, at least for me, uh, a big part of it is the people I surround myself with. It's at times hard to stay motivated. And the one big thing that I've heard is that being self-motivated is the number one like component that anyone in this industry kind of needs to have. You know, you're always learning on your own, keeping up with the times, and no one else can do that but you. You know, obviously you could be told to do things or learn some things, but you're going to fall behind at some point if you don't keep up with things and constantly keep learning and pushing forward. And so, you know, that can be tough when it's just you. But I, I really think that being self-motivated doesn't necessarily be have to be something you do alone. As long as you have people around you kind of motivating you. And for the last couple of years that I've known you, you've been one of those people that's always pushing us to kind of do better, to reach our goals, to not give up, to what's happening next in your saga. Did you finish that one thing you were working on? You know, it's kind of nice to have that group of people around you. So I think even if you need to find someone, because some people don't really have that group of people, I think having people around you to help push you, motivate you, a good coach, a mentor, anybody who can be by your side as you grow. And when you get that dream job, it's still nice to have a support team, whether it be family or friends or someone who 
keeps up with you from time to time. I think that's kind of my biggest way that I stay motivated in this whole game of things. I completely agree with you. Having your circle of influence and how do they push you and how do they keep you grounded? I think one of the biggest things with a circle of influence is evaluating who is in your circle of influence and are they providing value? And I, I know it's kind of weird to think about, right? Your Absolutely. friends or coworkers, do they provide value? And I remember reading a book, I can't remember the book name, but I remember this is such a old cliche topic where they always tell you, look at your circle of influence, even though you're, they're your best of friends, you've been kicking with your homies since grade school, but are they encouraging you about your dream? Are they being negative in your situation? Are they being toxic? Are they not pushing themselves to the next level where sometimes for your own spirituality and for your own motivation, sometimes you have to remove yourself and find that new group of, of, of friends or associates or colleagues, right? That's always tough, right? Yeah, definitely. And so you hit it right on the head. I, I really do think um, that you do need a strong circle of influence. So circle yeah, of influence yeah. one. Uh, second thing, learning. You, you, uh, as far as learning goes, what have you been doing to get that edge up and learning? And I know we talked about this before, but I want yeah, you to share yeah. what you've been doing here. Yes, a, c a couple of things I did. Uh, in the beginning, I was a little bit unsure what role I would like to fill. You know, I, like this whole industry is, is so appealing for a number of reasons, obviously. One being most of us are gamers, but it's not easy to just be in the industry, right? You have to be, you have to fill a role, fill a niche. So I think one of the biggest components of my learning was just learning about the industry, right? Learning what roles are out there, uh, what the roles entail, you know, what skills you need, what kind of experience you're looking for in these different positions, what companies are offering these sorts of positions, you know, that's so much learning that has to do outside of what you know, as, as like skills, what sort of traits you have, you know, none of that matters if you don't even know where to look in the beginning. And then once I kind of learned a little bit more of that, I started to learn a little bit about the skills that I need, right? So, uh, you know, project management, you need some sort of project management software you work in. So you kind of need to learn a little bit about that. And you also need to learn about uh, some of the actual components that make up project management, like the, the sort of uh, paths that different project managers follow or the different skills that they use in their roles every day. You know, I have, you have to learn those intricate nuances to get the requirements to actually start to apply to some of these roles. So definitely first is the education, the research, and then second is to go into that role. And I really think that would be what I learned the most about is specifying. And then from there, you know, online courses are everywhere. Online you know, courses I'm taking are them everywhere. in LinkedIn and Coursera and Udemy and wherever else I can find Google courses, Facebook courses. They're offered by so many companies. There's free ones. I've, I've watched courses on YouTube that are six hours long. Just anything, really, I think just getting getting to a course or not even a course, just some sort of learning material and just going through it. Just from day one to day 30 to day 60, you just have to get into something and start learning and building that, that list of skills you have. I think that's really what learning is all about is what are the skills you need and then getting them one by one, checking off the boxes. I, and one thing that that you actually told me when a couple of years back, you used to get certs like Pokemon badges. <laughs> And for me, I'm like, you know, God, that makes so much sense. Why don't I do that? Well, I should be doing that, getting these certs. I should be collecting them. Like, no, tomorrow. And part of that is the learning because you are learning how to get the cert or while getting the cert and, you know, passing whatever exams you have to pass and just building that list. And I think on top of all that, the hardest part back to difficulty with motivation is not seeing growth, right? You don't really see yourself getting smarter or learning more you don't really witness that growth but certs on the other hand i think you physically can see that list as you get them start to grow and and that kind of helps give you that that confidence and because of that i would say start with some short easy courses on some things <laughs> it might be a cheat but get, getting some courses done once you start learning it kind of pushes you to keep going it kind of gives you that motivation so my learning's kind of been learning what i need to know and then starting slowly, one by one, getting those skills. And, uh, and, and that's kind of funny that you mentioned, uh, you remember that. Uh, I do preach that a lot uh, to everyone. Yeah. I do preach that is the quickest way to get experience in the gaming industry. Because um, there's a lot of ways to get experience in the gaming industry. And I think what you said can resonate with a lot of people because 
motivation goes hand in hand with a lot of the work that you put into. And so, for example, this case, you're talking about certifications, which I preach all the time. Get your certifications. It's a no-brainer. It adds to your resume. It adds those keywords that you are missing. It adds the skills and experience that you're missing. And us recruiters do look at certifications as additional or supplemental experience. So, you know, Tyler, you mentioned motivation along working with the certifications. So you already know the path uh, because luckily you're a good friend of mine. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the episode here, you already know the path, but, but for you and and forgive me if I'm just, please correct me. But for what you're saying is you already know the skills. You already know the tools. It's just the motivation. And I guess timing, it's hard for you to put it all together. Yeah especially with holidays, families, all the different things that constantly take up that extra time you have that you put aside time all the time. And I'm sure a lot of people experience that I'm going to do it this weekend. And suddenly it's like, oh, I need you to come help me this weekend. And some, suddenly you're busy. You don't get to do it. Once you've missed that one opportunity, it kind of like sets you back a little bit. And then it's harder to get back into the groove and back motivated. So really that timing is just so important. So Maybe important. even staying regimented would help me at times you know <laughs> just knowing that every night i'm doing this might push me a little yeah. more so there are some things that i could improve upon yes. timing is one of them timing is is definitely crucial yeah. so where do you stand now we've been talking about you're an aspiring game producer or you're an aspiring game designer um you're still kind of on the cuff as far as which direction you want to go into and i think a lot of people are kind of in that transition too, for the aspiring people who want to break into the video game industry. They're like, well, I can go into QA or I can go in customer success. Where do you stand now? Or what's your plans right now? Maybe you can share some of your goals. Of course. See, I see these dream jobs as, at least right now, out of reach. Game per game designer, these sorts of roles, I I see them, at least in the companies I would like to apply for, right? Because I, I could start up in a smaller studio and maybe have a better shot. But I would like to work in these big companies. You know, I want to really influence the industry. At least that's a part of what I want. And so because of that, I do see a little bit of that gap between me and where I need to be at. I don't expect to on my own learn everything and jump there yeah. right away. So at the moment, uh, my goals are to find at least the best positions I can that will allow me to work with those types of people in the roles that I would like to work with. I'm not an artist. I can't jump into the art. It's a little harder to get into game design without art. They kind of go hand together you know, a lot of do, time. Yeah. You know, I'm, so at least in that regard, I'm kind of leaning towards producer. It's also relevant to my field now. I think that's okay. something that's helped me make a decision is kind of finding where I can take my skills that aren't in the game industry and translate them to the game industry. Because, you know, our skills and our experience, it's not useless. It's not a waste of time what we've been learning wherever we are. You know, I'm sure you can find something wherever you are, wherever you've worked in the past that you could apply to this industry, right? The game industry is not like some taboo mystery industry. It's just a different sect of of life you know it's just different type of work and so i in that regard I'm leading towards game producer and to really bridge that gap i'm looking at different positions uh, for example there's a couple of positions in like game mechanics like figuring out what they are planning them out you know organizing them setting them up before the game comes out uh improving upon them game balance these sorts of things i think those sorts of jobs will kind of put me in the industry in the area i kind of want to be in and i think they're a little bit more accessible at least in the beginning you know working on a specific part of a specific game then i can look at building and i've kind of learned a lot from your talks that you do and uh one of those big things was the type of people you work under you know how could you get that experience how can you bridge that gap and i think that once you break into the industry, it becomes a lot easier to move to the right position or to move up in the industry. You know, you have the brains of your boss that you can pick from and your coworkers around you, you can learn from. And I could definitely see that as being the same as any other industry. And in my industry now, I could move up work in some manufacturing company and go to a certain position by learning a little bit about the different departments and shipping and finance. And But I, I want to break into the game industry. So I'd want to do that there, you know, and that works there too. It's just, I would be doing that to a different set of, of, you know, items and skills that I'd be focusing on as opposed to what I am now. So I'm looking to break in at a lower level. We don't want to all start, you know, the destination is so far away for all of us, it seems. So I think starting somewhere more accessible would be nice getting into the industry and then 
starting to make my own network within the industry, meeting the different people from different departments, uh, different projects. Another big part of it is a lot of applications go towards a specific type of project, right? Whether it be an FPS or whether it be an RTS or whatever type of game that a certain you know group of people is working on, you typically apply to that type of group. So a lot of times we're looking for specific experience in that. So that's another big thing too, is I want to make sure I go into something that I'm passionate about. If I go into a genre like some farming simulator, I'm not going to be passionate about it and motivated to work there. And that's another part of what I'm kind of focusing on now is finding, you know, which are the genres I love the most, I know the most about, you know, I'm taking my time to figure out what goes into making those types of games and then finding like which role can I fulfill that'll lead me into the career that I would like to one day, you know, start building that foundation Uh, of where I'm at right now. It's insightful. I think you hit a lot of points that I want to take a second and dive into. And so I think it's funny that you mentioned the farming simulator. I remember Mm -hmm. that farming game, it was on Facebook. Uh, Yep. Farmville, right? Yeah, I played it. <laughs> uh, I think we all played Farmville. And so with you're in a unique situation and not every situation is the same. There's no one size that fits all. So uh, I'm, I'm super appreciative that you're able to go on, on my episode here, Tyler, and talk about your situation because your situation is going to be unique compared to the others out there. But there are going to be some similar ones where people may be listening and say, you know what, I'm in the kind of the same boat as Tyler. And you mentioned that you are curating and you are researching and you are um, being picky, cherry picking, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so me being in the business, I I see you as this person that is very methodical, almost like an engineer, to be honest. An engineer is very methodical and and linear in approach. And so you have your steps ahead of you. So I want to talk about your your approach system and Mm because it is different, like I mentioned before, with with other candidates or job seekers or or even industry vets are looking to transition. So for me, what I think it it is, there are some pros and cons to your approach. The pro is, of course, you have a job. And so you are unlike every other person out there who's been laid off or risk who may be unemployed. So you're actually in a good situation. I do encourage that to other people. If you're in a current job now, full-time job, take advantage of that. Your method, uh, methodology, may be the best methodology for the ones currently in with jobs, right? Uh, so yeah, I do absolutely. think that's a good approach to take uh, for what you're doing. For the ones who may be not uh, in a job or you're looking for work, it may not be the best approach. But I, I like your approach, though, because you are, you are taking that route. The second thing is that you mentioned is the game producer. So I've seen game producers do come from that background, which you just mentioned. I've seen game producers come from a analyst background, a QA background, which is quality assurance. And quality assurance can umbrella into customer service. It doesn't have to be software. It's just providing quality and assurance to the product or the staff that you have. And so I've seen producer come from that aspect. And, and I think that's a, that's a great path that you want to choose, the game producer, because what you're going to do is take a product or a game, um, in this case, from start to finish and actually see it uh, from start to finish. Or soup to nuts is what they call it in this business. Uh, that's an old terminology. I like that term. <laughs> right? I don't think people use it nowadays, but that's okay. So when you're going from that approach, people will think, oh, I need to be a game producer or, oh, I need to do this. And and I want to talk about that because I think it's very important. People do hop into that game producer role from a background like yours. And you mentioned you're in technology now. And, and can you share what type of business are you in now? Yeah, sure. So um, our company actually um, manufactures, uh, we act as a middleman for different shipping uh, companies and we pro- provide fixtures to different stores. So shelves, mannequins, the types of things you see when you go to shop at a store. So I, I'm kind of just in almost a manufacturing industry um, and shipping. Okay. So very right. Different. So yeah. it's not not the video game background, um, correct? But it's technology, and you're a professional. Yeah, I do all the IT. So and IT. So you you, yeah. you wear all the hats, right? Your project management. So those are transferable skills. And so I like to talk about that with people because a lot of times people don't understand transferable skills that they feel like they have to go, jump right into it and be like, I have to get my degree. I have to work as a low level, entry level person making minimum wage in order to do my career job. 
I think the focus that you're saying, Tyler, is absolutely attainable. Getting those transferable skills, you already sound like you have a clear path ahead of you. And I firmly believe, because I've seen it happen with other producers and other games, um, where they come from that background, a similar background like yours. And in those little nuggets, like doing certifications or doing volunteer work or unpaid work, will get them in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's like, definitely something I, 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 I'm, I'm I like working on my free time. Well, I'm, yes. I'm also a little bit ahead of the game. Luckily, I've had you in my corner for a while. So <laughs> I kind of have a little bit of a cheat sheet here. A little cheat sheet. A little yeah, cheat. you've kind of pushed me. So at least I, I have a little bit of a leg up. So people ask me all the time, like, you know, oh, I, I need your help, Justin, because you're going to get me into the game, gaming industry. Well, it doesn't work out like that. Like, again, like mm -hmm. I've, I mentioned before, one size does not fit all. There are some people where I have had cases where I love talking about my truck driver uh, case. He was a truck driver. He wanted to break into cybersecurity. I told him to get a security plus and he did it. He didn't have any prior experience in IT or certification. He didn't even have a degree, but he got his certification in security plus and he networked. And sometimes it's, it's the right timing. I think that's the purpose of this episode is talking about timing and talking about um, your circle of influence. And that's the reason why I brought you on this episode, because I do want to point that out. Like Tyler's my friend. He's a good friend of mine. We, we were in the same clan of Diablo 4, which yep. by the way, uh, what level are you in Diablo 4 right now? 82 right now. So wow. high up there. Not not we, quite max yet, but I'm getting there. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. I'm still stuck at 60. So you're way ahead of me. Hey, you're up there. You're in ancestral <laughs> territory. But it, we're friends here, and I wanted to bring Tyler on the sh on that, the show here because I wanted to point out people think there's this magical mirror that they're going to get a job right away, or it's going to have to happen this route. No, everyone has a different path, and that's perfectly fine. It's okay. Tyler is going to keep doing what he's doing, and eventually he will break into the game industry. I have 100% confidence he will. It's just he has a certain game plan. There's certain things that he wants to do, and he's lucky enough to have his current job now. So what advice would you say for people in your unique situation, Tyler, um, as far as let's go back to motivation, because I love motivation. Sure. I love yeah, positivity. Absolutely. That goes with any industry, any field, anything you want to do in life, right? Not even just job hunting, but and every time I'm kind of asked this sort of question, it's, it's always good because it's kind of like, what advice would I give to myself? If I could beat myself up, tell me, do something, right? The biggest part of it, like I said earlier, I think uh, regimenting your time better. I think time management is just so key and critical for someone who's working, especially most of your day is gone. So you, you can kind of cast that aside to what you're able to do, right? Um, your nine to five is gone. Yeah, exactly. And then you, after that, you still have chores. You got laundry, you got dishes, you got to eat. There's so much time in your day. You, you got to remember to take care of yourself. So that's first and foremost, take care of yourself. Best advice. Don't forget. I've had times where I was so into learning, so into watching videos or even so into playing games that I just forget to take care of myself. And I know that when I take care of myself, I'm more motivated. That's just a fact, right? I, I feel good. I look good. I smell good. Uh, all those <laughs> things kind of push me, right? So they help me kind of feel confident, help me feel motivated, help me want to get on there and, and push forward and, and learn, obviously wellness number one thing i think everything else is secondary to that once you have good wellness things start to kind of fall into place a little bit better uh you know at the times that i'm not taking care of myself i don't really feel motivated i don't always want to go watch another lecture take a quiz or learn a little bit or, or put in applications all those sorts of things it, it takes energy and time when i don't feel good about myself i don't have the energy to do those things so that's definitely a big part of it other than taking care of yourself organization definitely learning, whether you're not learning, whether you're looking for jobs, you know, keeping track of things, where you know things from, what you're going for. I think all those sorts of things are, are key pieces of information that contain so many resources between them too. Just organizing them on your computer, organizing them on your phone, your mind, wherever you're keeping track of these things. I think you need somewhere that it can be. If you organize these thoughts somewhere, you stop worrying about them. When you don't organize your life, you're kind of worrying about the different things, trying to make sure you remember where things are and what you need to know. But when you organize ideas and information, your desktop, at times it kind of like helps that information to go away from your mind. You're not worried about things that you don't have to worry about. So I think that's definitely number two is just got to organize, got to organize, you know, your desk, your mind, your computer, whatever it is. And uh, I think my, my last really big piece of motivation and 
you know, I'm almost thinking like, you know, what do I need to do more? What do I need? Because <laughs> I, I, I see myself getting you know, stuck at certain walls and hurdles and things is, is what we were talking about before. Uh, time management one is managing your time better, organizing your day, making sure you have time every week to learning every day if you can. Um, and then the other part is that whole circle is I do have a lot of people in my life, and, I, and a lot of people will relate to this, that don't really provide much, that I find myself wasting energy and time on. People I give advice to that don't take it. Um, I let I let people just vent to me all the time, and I feel like I need to cut back on that. I, I think a lot of people probably fall into my shoes where they kind of want to be people pleasers, and they want people to be happy, and I, I constantly put myself second, and I think that if I start to take more time for myself and Sorry, I can't do that today. I'm busy, and I kind of use that time productively. If I do that more, which part of that time management, right, is not spending time on the wrong people or at the wrong things. That's my biggest thing holding me back. Out of everything else is just exactly what you said. Cutting back on the people that don't provide any value physically, spiritually, mentally, however it is. People that don't make you feel loved or that people you feel like don't appreciate you, but you still help them anyway. You know, I just cutting back on some of that because that takes up so much of my time and that where that's where a lot of my extra time goes and my motivation goes so cuts back to what you were saying before about that circle you know staying with the right people staying motivated and hey meeting you and you know the other friends that we met at the time uh, you guys are part of the best circle of my life the people who look out for each other that. motivate each other you know <laughs> like everyone genuinely cares about each other pushes each other such a different world than what I was used to with a lot of my friends and people around me who feel the same that I do. They all want to make more money, be in a better industry, be happier. Yeah. And so it, instead of doing anything, because these people don't, you know, push themselves to do things, they, they almost hold you back at times. And so I think spending less time around that negative energy, the complaining and spending more time productively around positive energy, you know, using the things that have bothered you, that have held you back, use that to push you forward, right? Use it to know what you want, not to complain about it, right? Complaining is just a waste of time, but it does let you know what you want. So once you've complained about it, now you know that you need to fix that, right? Because only you are the master of your own destiny, right? No one else is going to get this job for you. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, those are, I think that's the, the perfect ending to our episode here. So three things uh, that you mentioned, I uh, think really resonates with a lot of people. Uh, the first thing is mental health awareness and what are you doing to make sure that you're staying healthy, both mentally and physically. You gotta take care of yourself before you can achieve anything and, and level up to the next level. Uh, second thing you hit right on the head is time management and organization. Two crucial things I still struggle to experience with every single day. <laughs> yep. So there is no magic formula for time management and organization is just having that in the back of your mind. I think it's key. And the last thing which we kind of did a full circle on is your circle of influence. Are, are you having that right circle of influence? And there's actually a term for that. Uh, so Tyler, uh, his gamer name is Taco and my, yep. my gamer name is Nitsujin, which is Justin backwards. Wait. And, and um, as you know, Taco, my favorite kind of like fantasy character is a vampire. So going back to the uh, circle of influence, there's a term for that. Emotional vampires. But you got to be aware of the emotional vampires. Because what emotional vampires will do is suck the energy right out of you, even though you're being a good friend. And the biggest culprits are always your family and friends. It is not strangers. Everyone thinks it's strangers. No, it's every day you're not going to walk out of the door and a stranger is going to come up to you and know exactly about your life and start sucking the life force out of you. The people <laughs> that are your yeah. close friends, your family, believe it or not, those are your emotional vampires. And I'm not saying, and I don't think Tyler or myself is saying, don't just be cold hearted to them. No, absolutely not. Because they're going to be your family and friends. It's just the nature where they are the first lines of defense where they're going to say, you can't do this, or I don't think you can do this. And it's not because they're being mean. It's coming from a place where they want to protect you, right? So if you look at it that way with, with the intent of the assumption of intent that they just want to protect you or they just want to give you advice so they can protect you, it doesn't have to be malicious. But from our perspective, we do have to be aware of emotional vampires because 
it can be draining and what are the best steps? And maybe that'll be a uh, next episode. Maybe I'll bring you on again yeah. and we can talk about what steps have you proven and taken, but I love those three points. I think those are three critical and crucial points to end that first episode on. So Tyler, it, thank you again so much for hopping a call. Literally everyone, I have to tell you, I literally just discorded Tyler and said, Hey, do you want to hop on a, a podcast call? And he was like, I'm down. When can yeah, I do this? That is a, a good friend. Yeah. I mean, I'm not only excited, but I, I'm happy to be able to be here with you after you've helped me so much through these years and any way I can give back, even just being here, if I can give some of my advice and some of the things that you've shared with me, I'm ecstatic. Awesome. Awesome, Tyler. Right. Hey, I, again, I don't want to let you away from your, your Diablo four time. I know you got to reach your, and you got to do your mental your health drive. awareness. I know, you know, maybe get a little break, walk around, get your, your skills back up. But uh, Tyler, yeah. it's been such a pleasure. I can't wait to invite you on my next episode. Thank you once again for being on Talent and Skills Tree. So appreciative to have a network like you. You're in my circle of influence. So I appreciate you, buddy. Of course. And thank you. All right. And until next time, everyone, thank you for uh, checking out episode one of Talent Skill Tree. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay tuned.